Hi, this is Rachel, and today we're going to cover topic nine, shaping in our supervision curriculum. So we've talked about reinforcement, and now we're going to talk about differential reinforcement. So differential reinforcement just means that you are selecting um, one behavior to reinforce over another. So for example, a parent may um, decide to honor a polite requests that involve the word please and not honor requests that do not involve the word please. Um, that would be an example of differential reinforcement. They, have, they are differentially reinforcing the use of please in a request and they're not reinforcing requests that do not include the word please. So that is differential reinforcement. Um, shaping involves successive re, um, reinforcing successive approximations to a target behavior. So there are some behaviors uh, and skills that it is very difficult to prompt um, or the learner may not have the prerequisites yet to um, benefit from certain types of prompts. So we might use shaping to gradually help the learner get to that newer complex skill um, without using prompting strategies. This is also um, a strategy that is used a lot of times um, with early language um, or language in general because we can't necessarily help or show somebody um, exactly how to um, move their tongue and um, place their lips and make the sound come out to vocally communicate or to vocally produce sounds. So we use shaping to help um, the learner uh, recognize which sounds are closer and closer to the target sound that we are working on. Um, it can also be used to uh, increase the amount of communication or the, uh, it, it can be used with all behaviors, but it's specifically with vocal um, communication to increase the amount of words maybe that are being used. Um, when we uh, start to shape um, a behavior, we want to make sure that we are starting at a level that is um, something the learner can already do. So if my learner can already, um, I'm going to just use vocal as examples, um, if my learner can already um, say ma, 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 great, then we're going to start with that. So if we wanted to eventually have our learner say mom, for example, we would start with ma, 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 and we'd be like, yes, that's mom, good job. And we'd reinforce, you said mom. Um, and then after they are consistently saying ma, 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 then we might differentially reinforce to another step where maybe we just want ma, ma. So we're shortening that syllables and we're getting something that's closer to um, our target behavior at the end. So mama. And now when they say mama, we reinforce. If they go mama, 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 we say, oh, good try, or that was close. Um, mama is what we're going to reinforce. Yeah, you said mom. Great job, mama. You said mom. Um, and then once they're consistently saying mama, then we might go to mama, mama, um, and add in a different vowel. And when they're consistently doing that, then we might change it to mom. And now that's that progression, right? And each time we're not prompting them, we are simply reinforcing when they get closer and closer to that um, target sound, what we want it to sound like. Um, 
it's important to remember uh, that you have to start with something the learner can already do so that you can establish um, that pattern of like, yes, you're on the right track. And then when that's a good, strong pattern, then you would take it just a step different. So you don't want to um, withhold reinforcement. You don't want to differentially reinforce a step that's too big of a step to make. I can't go from ma 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 to mom because that's maybe too big for that learner. We need to have some smaller steps in between. If you try to change to um, a new level in your shaping successive approximations, if you try to change to a new level and you find that your learner is not um, being successful, then you need to step back to where they were, get that occurring consistently again, and then um, look for a different approximation, maybe a smaller step, a smaller change, or maybe change something else about it. Maybe again, using an example of a vocal um, language, maybe they have they struggle with different vowels but their consonants um they've got a wider repertoire of consonant sounds that they can make so maybe try focusing on a different aspect that you could shape or change um you don't want to stay at one level for too long um, because you do want to capture that momentum um, of continuing to shape towards your end goal, um, but you don't want to go too fast either. So you've got to find that nice balance where the learner can um, make the next step um, at least some of the time, and then you can increase that to be all of the time through reinforcement. Enforcement, and then once they're consistent, then you would change over to the next thing. Um, now, shaping as a topic here is pretty short. So this is actually the, the gist of um, uh, what I usually um, talk about. But what I encourage people to do is to find an opportunity to um, maybe download like the free version of, um, I think it's Sniffy Pro, um, Sniffy the Rat. It's a computer rat that you can shape um, or some other variation of that type um, so that you can practice shaping. Shaping is a um, on paper sounds super easy. <laughs> it's an art. It requires you to um, capture um, and reinforce new behaviors when they occur, when you're not necessarily going to know what behavior the organism is going to give you. Um, there's sort of two different ways that you can look at um, shaping, and really it's it's a combination of the both. So I don't want you to say like, the, there's two different things, but um, one um, perspective would be that you, um, as the shaper um, would capture what the individual is doing, what the organism is doing, reinforce that. And then you kind of have to have this plan for how you're going to get them to gradually get up to the behavior. Um, so this is what's done often in um, rat labs. Uh, when I was in grad school, we had a rat lab um, and we taught the rat to press the bar. Um, this is also an activity that you can do on the like free version of like Sniffy Pro or I'm pretty sure it's Sniffy Pro. Um, but there's a free version um, that I've been able to find online. Um, and you can, um, you have to start with a rat that sort of wanders around the um, box, but as he gets closer to the bar, 
then you can click and he gets his reinforcement and then he's staying near the bar and now he's like sniffing around the bar and then he touches the bar and you're reinforcing the touching of the bar and then he's pressing the bar. Um, so you go through all of this. We did that same thing in um, grad school and it was uh, very interesting too, just to see the different um, topographies of bar pressing that got shaped up. So some uh, people, their rat sat there and pressed the bar. Some people had um, shaped up some interesting little chains. There was one who would press the bar and then move his head all the way around the bar and then press the bar again and did that every single time. Um, and then my uh, rat, I actually reinforced it for biting the bar. So it um, would bite the bar. Um, which turned out to be super handy. That was the, that was the guidance that I was given from previous students was teach it to bite the bar instead of press um, because it can bite and press a lot faster. So then when you get to um, the really long uh, reinforcement schedules, um, he can go through it faster. So I did that, but you know, reinforced biting of the bar instead of pressing with the lever. Um, so even though we all had the same goal in mind and we all had similar organisms, we ended up with a lot of different topographies because of the way that people chose to, um, to click, to reinforce um, and, and how the organism, um, what the organism then did with that information. So um, on the one side, one way that you may see uh, shaping presented is going to be along the lines of your organism is free to do anything and it's your job to reinforce them, to gradually help them figure it out. If you've ever played the like, um, like a game when you're a kid where you hide something and then you say like warmer, 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 colder, warmer, um, as the person tries to like find it, um, that is basically shaping if you don't say colder, right? You just say warmer each time. Um, eventually the person probably finds the item, um, but they might engage in a whole lot of other behaviors in the meantime um, that are just in their repertoire, right? Um, another way to look at it um, comes from the portal uh, training manual, which is a portable operant research and training lab. Um, P-O-R-T-L. Um, and they have a whole shaping workbook and, um, and a game that you can uh, learn and play to practice shaping skills. I do have some other videos that are probably a bit older here on my channel that um, do show examples of the portal shaping game. Um, and with their approach or the, their conception of this, conceptualization of this, uh, is that instead of giving your learner this free open environment and hoping that they start to do something that's close to what you want so you can shape it, um, to start with evoking the correct response, the behavior you're looking for, um, evoke that by arranging the environment to set the learner up for success from the beginning, then you can gradually change the environment to be more like what your target uh, behavior is. So for example, if I wanted someone to um, pick up a ball and, you know, drop it through uh, a hole up here. Or no, let's see, pick up a ball and drop it from a height of like one foot off the table, right? Um, some people, sure, they might, they might pick up the ball and they might drop it and they might drop it from a higher thing. So you might be able to do it that way. Um, but you could guarantee that your learner is right from the start by um, uh, um, putting a ball in front of them and then holding out your hand, 
right? And most people, when your hand is out, that's a cue that a lot of people know means put it in my hand. Um, so that might be a cue that works for your learner. They put it in your hand, then you reset it, you put the ball in front, you hold your hand up very high, they put it up high, then maybe you change your hand so that it's like a circle, so they know to drop it through, and then um, after you do that several times, then maybe um, you take your hand away and they still pick it up and they still drop it from that high because you have reinforced the behavior of pick it up, drop it, pick it up, drop it so many times that they're going to engage in that behavior. You actually haven't shaped their behavior. You have shaped um, the SDs that they are responding to. Um, so I do encourage you also to check out um, the uh, portal information, P-O-R-T-L. I will put links in the um, description here. And um, they have some videos, they have some examples. And if you're able to order the book, get the training, um, it's actually pretty fun. And I found that it was very helpful when thinking about how to support learners who I'm not able to prompt very well, let's arrange the environment to help them do the correct behavior. And then let's gradually basically kind of shape the environment back to what we want to see. So those are two additional activities um, that I would encourage people to do. Check out an online uh, like free demo for like Sniffy the Rat um, and check out the portal, uh, portable operant research and training lab um, uh, shaping curriculum. And I'll link those down in the comments or in the description. <laughs> So the assignments uh, define the term shaping, uh, outline a plan for shaping the request. I want more juice, please. So where would you start if the learner just has um, the word juice? What would you add? What might be your plan um, for uh, differentially reinforcing, for shaping um, step by step to get to that full sentence? And then describe how differential reinforcement is used in the shaping um, procedure. So that was topic nine, shaping. Um, please subscribe if you'd like to get all of these topics and uh, be notified when new topics come out. And if you have uh, questions or comments or you want to answer the questions on the assignment in the um, comments below, please uh, drop those comments down in there and I'd be happy to provide feedback. Thanks.